Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles this morning to Psalm the 18th chapter. Your Bibles or however you have your scripture this morning, Psalm the 18th chapter. Praise the Lord. God is arising early for his people in 2024. God is arising early for you in 2024. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 18, verse 28. You can leave it in the King James. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. What God is doing this year in your life, he's doing early. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. For thou, O Lord, will light my candle. The Lord, my God, will enlighten my darkness. I don't really know any greater blessing of redemption than God lighting your candle. For thou, O Lord, will enlighten my candle. The Lord, my God, my God, my God is personal. My God will enlighten my darkness. Glory to God. I don't care who you are. You're still a growing saint. I don't care how much God has used you. I don't care how much you think you know. I love what the late Kenneth Hagin, my primary mentor of faith, always used to say, that the more you know God, he said, the more I get to know God, the more I know I don't know. Very dangerous to think you know God. Very dangerous to think you have him in, the, in your corner. You know everything about him. Very dangerous to go to scriptures with a heart that's not open for further revelation. Very dangerous to think that you know the terrain. Or Robert of blessed memory used to tell his staff, when you get fed up, fed up and tired of hearing the same thing, you're just beginning to understand it. So in the school of faith, hearing is our weapon for growth. So then faith cometh by hearing, cometh. There's no end to faith. There's no end to breakthrough. There's no end to testimony. Where your faith stops, your testimony stops. But we know how faith comes. Faith cometh by hearing, Romans 10, 17. And hearing by the word of Christ, the word of Christos, the anointed one. Oh, may God give us eyes to see and ears to hear. May we never become God's uncles and aunties. May we never believe that we have figured God out. Lord, enlighten my candle. This, this boy is asking you, enlighten my candle. The Lord my God will. It's his desire. He will enlighten my darkness. Go with me to Proverbs 20. Thank you, Lord. What an anointing of God's spirit here this morning. I submit to you that the greatest blessing of redemption is enlightenment. The greatest illiterate on, under heaven is a spiritual illiterate. Thank God for education. It has its place. Thank God for exposure. It has its place. But any human being that's not enlightened, any human being that's not born again, is the greatest fool under heaven. Because you are united with the greatest failure, Satan. But the greatest privilege on earth is to be born again. To be translated from the kingdom of darkness, the authority of darkness, according to Colossians 1.12, and be translated to be moved, to be transported, to be moved into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the dear son of God's love, to be elevated and honored by being placed in that kingdom. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 6.17, to whoever is joined unto the Lord, whoever is joined to the Lord has got one spirit with him. 2027. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching the inward parts of the belly. It's talking about your inward parts, not your intestine, but the, inner, the innermost man. It's, it's from the innermost, innermost man that you make a success in life. You make a success in life when your man on the inside is enlightened. Then that man on the in inside becomes a candidate for true wisdom, not fleshly wisdom. When you're born again, you have the ability to understand scriptures. The Bible said concerning um, Cleopas and his friend who are walking with Jesus on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24. The Bible says he breathed upon them and then he, 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 gave, he opened them to understand the scriptures. He opened their understanding. That is the greatest literacy under heaven. That, that you can understand spiritual things. And if you are not born again, I'm talking about spiritual things of God. If you're not born again, you can't understand his things. You can't understand the pathway to navigate in this life and always be ahead of satanic operations. 
What an honor to be born again. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. What happens when you put a candle on? In darkness, when you light a candle, all of a sudden, every, th- every part of the room is attracted to that light. Enlightenment. I hear somebody. Now, when you get born again, your candle, your spirit man, the real you, becomes enlightened. You receive the way, the life and nature of God. Eternal life. Then you become enlightened. You become a candle. Praise God. For that. Praise, praise the name of the Lord. That is enlightened. You become a, a candle that shines. I hear somebody. And from your spirit man, God will enlighten you, enlighten you. From your inward man, God will educate you. He'll give you understanding in life. You'll be able to navigate the pathways of life. Then you start making decisions not like a mere man. Not like a mortal man. You don't go because everybody's going. You don't stay because everybody's staying. You go because God is going with you. And God said go. You stay because God is there with you. So you are no longer moved by circumstances. You don't relocate yourself or allocate yourself anything. Again, that God has not allocated you. That is wisdom indeed. Because only God knows the pathways of life. Only God knows the pathways to true success. Are you here somebody? So here it says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly, the spirit man. Now let's go to Isaiah 42, 16. My God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My God, if you're here born again, lift up your head high. If you're here, you're born again, forget your circumstances. Lift up your head. Do you know who you are? You are a child of the living God. You carry away the life and nature of God. Listen, when you celebrate what you have inside of you, it will start showing forth. You're not disadvantaged in any way. The day you got born again, disadvantage ceased. Ceased in your life. But you need to be enlightened. Oh, you need to be enlightened. You need to know what you have. It's like the, the proverbial man that has a woman that has a million dollar deposit and yet they're, they're eating like a, like a pauper and a beggar. Remember that old, it's not just a story, it's actually a true um, situation that took place when a certain man wanted to leave his country in Europe and travel to the United States for better pastures and he saved up all the money he could working all kind of odd jobs, polishing, shiny shoes, being out garbage, doing everything to, to buy a ticket to go on a ship in those days, I think it was the 1930s or 1920s, thereabout. And he came upon this ship, this ocean liner, and he, he, he got his room. And the trip was about, it was a couple of weeks. So day after day, he now saved, he, he, he was getting water from, you know, water was free in the, on the ship, so he was getting water, and he now saved up a supply of crackers, crackers, you know, cabin biscuits. And he was just eating that ration by ration. So towards, but actually, yes, you're right, sir. A cabin biscuit, senior brother of crack. Of course, cabin biscuit is a bit. Oh, crack is senior brother of cabin. Uh, hey, you're right. But sweetened, you know, they sweetened it now. In those days, it was not sweetened. But now it's sweetened. So if you didn't go to secondary school, you understand. So in Nigeria, that is. So towards the end of the second week, this guy will go out day by day and, you know, just take some sun on the, you know, on the, on the, on the, on the ship and everything. So towards the end of the second, the man noticed, I said, ah, you've been, I've been, you've been, I've, I've not, I've not seen you in the dining room all these days. He said, no, sir, <laughs> I can't afford that dining. I can't afford to go there. I could only afford the price of the ticket. And the captain said, oh my goodness. The ticket included three meals and all the facilities of this ship. Ah, the guy, ah, as if it should reverse time. Am I now? You see, that's why, that is why you have the ministry of the, the, the teaching priest in the body of Christ. And that's why you have the ministry of the anointing of gospel. Let me tell you the truth. Yes, I know. Do you know that God has ordained that you will not learn everything by yourself? No matter how anointed you are. There's some things. A teaching priest must come upon you. Must, you must be in the presence of somebody anointed. Sometimes you can be studying scriptures. No matter how anointed you are, you understand it. But sometimes you go to a place a place and you see somebody standing up and stay, you say the scripture and then you know the scripture, you can quote it you, can, you know the Greek and Hebrew but something will open to you you see something you've never seen before that's the blessing of redemption eyes that see, eyes that see ears that hear a wise understanding heart you see Proverbs 20, 20, 12 say, Proverbs 20, 12 say it is God it is God that makes the hearing ear and the seeing eye now look at this, I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not Sama, 
to enter God's true success, you must be led somewhere we don't know. You can, you can never figure it all out. So this year, God is bringing you along paths you have not known. There are things that are hidden for you you don't even know is yours yet. Sometimes God hides it from us so that we will not mess it up. Because sometimes we see it, we'll try and get there by ourselves. And we'll mess it up. It's just when you're about to get there, he will unveil it. I will bring the blind by way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. You see, well, this, we're going to walk in these blessings this year like never before. I will make darkness light before them. Not physical darkness. That means he will not leave you in confusion. He will give you understanding about situations and circumstances. You know, during the fast this year, one of the things the Lord kept telling us is that he's going to, he's going to fortify our armor of discernment. 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 What a blessing. That you walk along, you, 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 you walk along some paths, you see things that men call breakthrough, but something your heart will reject it because only God can show you the difference between an open door and a trap. So, see, when this discernment begins, thank you, sir, begins to operate in your life, the best way I can say it without sounding vulgar is like, you, when, when you want to enter or do a certain thing, it will be like you're taking poop and putting it on yourself. You know, no, 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 this is not for me. So, you're not going to judge by whether or not something is nice or looks palatable, but there's an arm of discernment inside of you. I will make darkness light before them and then crooked things will become straight. Things will start falling in place. Are you here somebody? Now let's go back to Psalm 18. I just took this detour. Psalm 18. Glory to God. My, my, my. Thank you Lord. For thou, O Lord, will light my candle. Verse 28. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. You see what's happening? He's going to keep enlightening us from within. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. We were visiting with somebody yesterday after we went to vote with uh, Pastor Eliso. We went to just visit somebody close by in the neighborhood that we heard um, I was ill, had a, you know, had a, 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 a surgery, stuff like that. So we went to visit this person. The person was telling us, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a mature believer, was telling us that they were just lying upon their bed sometime before Christmas, sometime in the month of December, and just enjoying, you know, just after they finished organizing some kind of Christmas program for some people and all of that, kids and widows and all of that, and they were just resting, and the Holy Ghost just said to them, get up and go to the hospital now! So this person said, why, why, I'm not sick. I'm not doing anything. But the person had gone to ch check their eyes some, some, some weeks ago and to check their lenses. I mean, change the lenses. So, they, they just decided to do a more, to probe a bit deeper, you know, just do a more comprehensive test. The consultant she went to, that she knows, and then they said, ah, then you have a situation that you need to go, you need to go to and, and check Lagos, Kaduna, Kaduna or Abuja, I think. Kaduna or Lagos. Those are the only two places they do that kind of surgery. So this person said, okay, we're just taking their time and all of that. So this, this person, no, 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 that was, I'm, I'm, I'm taking backwards. I'm, they had just gone to check the lenses. So they, they, they were try, she just got the lenses changed. And then when she was lying down now, I didn't want to say she, but her. The Holy Ghost just said, go to the hospital now. She said, I'm not sick. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm feeling okay. Then she lay down again. After a few minutes, that voice again, I said, get up and go to the hospital now. She just got up. And close one eye and saw that with the other eye, all she could see was the ceiling. She said, What is going on? So she went and checked. Long story short, you know, they checked her, discovered she needed to do the surgery. She went and did the surgery and all of that. But my point is this. And we're talking, my point is this. What if they say some, some people just get up like that and wake up blind? Now God can heal, heal blindness. Okay? He can. There's not, not a problem with Him to do that. Are you here, somebody? But. But it doesn't need to get to that. I'm I, was, I was asking myself, what if this person was not enlightened? What if they did not hear the voice of the Holy Ghost? For thou will light my candle, the Lord God will enlighten my darkness. This enlightenment will prosper in your life this year in the name of Jesus Christ. You will enlighten my candle. The grace of God will give me a sensitivity to the voice of God's spirit that I've never had before. A discernment that I've never had before. Let's go ahead, verse 29. 
Now look at this. As a result of the Lord enlightening my darkness, as a result of him doing that, now by thee, that thee is God. So who is the God there? The God there is manifested himself by enlightenment. So it is through this enlightenment, through this candle being lit and this enlightenment that came that removed darkness. Now through that, I have run through a troop. You know, in David's day, when they fight, they just fight, face me, I face you. So the strongest armies are the ones that can overwhelm. They just run into each other. So by thee, I have run through a troop. By what? By enlightenment. David was the warrior that introduced a new set of dynamics into warfare. He was the warrior that listened to God before the war. He did not just depend on the expertise or how battle-ready Israel was or how experienced they were. He was the warrior that kept listening to God for every battle. You see, because of his enlightenment, he never lost a battle. For by thee, I have run through a troop. You will not go as everybody else goes this year. You will be enlightened. By thee, I have run through a troop and by my God. You see, that's the manifestation of God's arm and strength there. By my God, have I leaped over a wall. I like saying this. One translation said, have I scaled an impossible place? By my God. So nothing shall be called impossible for you this year. You see, it's by your God and enlightenment that you go to a rock and pull out honey. You go to a flintstone, diamond, hardest, I mean diamond. There's no oil in diamond. But God will pull out oil in diamond. See, by thee, I have run through a troop. By my God, have I leaped over a war. This is how you face every challenge and battle this year. By my God. What is that manifestation of my God? Enlightenment. The Lord my God lights my candle. The Lord my God enlightens my darkness. For by thee, I have run through a troop. And by thee, I have leaped over a wall. Or scaled over an impossible place. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, as I was rolling around my spirit concerning this month of February, because the Lord had told us that January is a fat month, dripping with oil and fatness. Praise the name of the Lord. I said, I, I said praise the name of the Lord. And indeed, I won't, I won't lie to you. For me personally, for me personally, January was a fat month, dripping with oil and honey. That's all I can tell you. Praise the name of the Lord. I know the Lord told me that he's not, he's not going to let up. He said he's starting with us early and he's going to maintain that temple. Are you here somebody? So I ha- kept having an impression in my spirit. I kept having an impression. You know how it is that when people are running in a race, especially this, um, sometimes this 4x100 or 4x400, you know when you go four, or, 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 or when you're going once around the track or when you're, when you're going 100 meters then divide that track 400 meters into four. You know, the fast teams seem to pull away sometimes. Although some, some teams pull away earlier. But many times, it's that third baton change that you start seeing the distance coming. So they leave their fastest runners for the fourth. That's four by 100. When they divide that track of 400 into one 100. So the baton change between third and fourth, that's when you start seeing many times a major pulling away. So most teams will leave their fastest runners to the last. Why? so that they can compensate in case something happens. So many times you see Usain Bolt or all those guys, you know, um, what's his name in 88, was it 88, Carl Lewis, all those guys. I don't know who the fastest guys are now, but let's just use Usain Bolt. So when they, when they pull out from that third to fourth button change, then you start seeing pulling away distance. You just start seeing distance. I hear somebody. That's what I saw in my spirit for February. You see, the Holy Ghost had told us, and the Lord had told us, that there has been, it's been happening here and there, a little here, a little there. He said, but this year is going to be general body Christ-wide. He's going to pull and make a distance between the church and the world. Amen. He said there's going to be a, he's going to make a distance. <laughs> so I saw it, for, as we enter this February, what I saw in my heart is a pulling away. A distancing. So, what, so you, you may say, Pastor, what do you mean by distance? I said, there are going to be some manifestations happening in people's lives. Are you here, somebody? That's going, to, that's going to remove them from the pack. The world is going to hear, God is going to jump the church forward. He said, he's going to make that demarcation. And he said, he's going to start early. 
Are you here, somebody? So when I was thinking about February, I saw in my spirit, I seemed to see in my spirit an impression of somebody taking a step. But that step seemed to be a normal step, but it was connecting mountaintop to mountaintop. You know, we've been saying this for years. One step is like 10 steps. You're going to start singing earlier this year. Some of you will take one step. It will be equivalent to 100 steps. To you, to be just a simple step of instruction you obey, though, it will be like a thousand steps. And God will pull you up. Listen, you're going to see jump in finances. So this month, February, is the month all the Holy Ghost told me is leap. You know what leap is? You know frogs don't walk, ma. You, you know what frogs do? They leap. So that's what's going to happen. But it's the steps you're going to take. But in the anointing, God's going to multiply it. So what I saw is a leap. I saw a jump in February. And it's going to start very early. Glory to God forevermore. Listen, as, this, as you're hearing these words, these words are calibrating you. Calibrating you. See, these words, they're, 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 they're getting into your system and they're, they're constructing, they're putting a construct inside of you that can handle that anointing. By thee, I've run through a troop and by my God, I've leaped over a wall. So what is this leap? It's a significant departure from the norm. Let me say that again. It's a significant departure from the norm. It's a pulling away from the status quo. I'm saying it so you can expect it. It's a pulling away. It's a division. It's a distancing between the godly and the ungodly. The righteous and the unrighteous. The Lord told me this year, 2024, starting from this year, he's going to put a marked difference. He said, it's been happening a little here, a little there. A few here, a few here. But it's, it's going to now become a mass thing in the body of Christ. He's going to pull the church forward. Are you here, somebody? That's the body of Christ. Now give me Exodus, please. Chapter 8, verse 22. Give me, uh, let's, let's go for 21. Else, if thou will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee. Um, this was God speaking to Pharaoh through Moses. And upon thy servants, and upon thy people, into thy houses, and into the houses of the Egyptians. No, I, I, I'm finished. And into, the house, into thy houses, and into, okay, into, and into thy houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. Verse 22. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies be there. Now look at this, look at this. To the end, or this is the reason why I'm going to do this, that you may know, Pharaoh, that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. This is the reason. It's for a sign of wonder. Isaiah 8, 18, I am the children the Lord has given unto me, therefore signs and, have, and for what? For wonder. So look at this. That word siva means to distinguish. It, must, it means to put a division or a demarcation between. Are you here somebody? So that's what's going to begin to happen very early this year. But 2024, that is, is the beginnings of these things. That God's putting a distance between his people and the world. Glory to God. Let me put it in Nigerian palace. The world no go no say church no be there meet. Oh my God. God is pulling his people out of frustration. He's pulling his people. The anointing of God is advancing and progressing his people. Some things are going to be halted in your life in the name of Jesus. Many of you are no good. Are, are you will no longer be customers to hospitals. Nothing. I have no problem with hospitals. You will be paying for people to go there, but you will not need to go there yourself. God is putting a halt to many things in the name of Jesus Christ. He's pulling his people forward. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen. Goshen, like we know, was a part of Egypt, the place where the Pharaoh that was Pharaoh in the days of Joseph allotted the best part of Egypt. He allotted it to Joseph and his family that came. And in that land of Goshen where Israel grew and prospered, even when the Pharaoh that did not know Joseph came in that, in the in, and, they, and they, they put them, uh, made them you know, servants and put them in bondage. But when Moses came, a deliverer, after 430 years, hallelujah, in the land of Goshen, God began to, now Goshen had become the land where the slaves dwelt. It became the land of their exemption. The land where the slaves dwelt became the land of their exemption. The place where they have put them, 
and thought that they were subservient became the place of their exemption. So you see, wherever this anointing finds you, it will become the place of your lifting and the place of your exemption. Are you here, somebody? When I turned 55, the Lord told me, and I believe it's a word for the church. He said, from this time forward to the day I, I return, to my, to, to the, to, to, to the, for the rest of your life or to the time that I return, you will operate from this place of sufficiency, this place of overflow. Then he began to teach me about the overflow anointing. Are you here, somebody? I said, your feet are in this overflow anointing. He said, from now henceforth, Till the time I return or, or for the rest of your life, you operate from this place. Then he said, it is my place. It's a secret place. He said, my place of super sufficiency. I said, you will no longer ever come from behind again. You always operate from front. And I'm speaking that word over this church in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm speaking that word over the saints of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Because some things you get by privilege of impartation. Placement and impartation. So I will see by in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end that thou mayest know that I the Lord am God in the midst of the earth. You see, God is going to get the world's attention quickly for the purpose of redemption and salvation. Satan is operating at a high speed on this earth. He knows his time is short. So God can never be behind Satan. So God is not catching up with Satan. He's overtaking him. And the way he does it is through the church. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? So you're not, you're not catching, you're overtaking in the name of Jesus. This overflow anointing is bringing you, is causing you to overtake in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to verse 23. See the word silver? And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow this sign shall be. What I want you to understand is that it's a sign. It's for a sign. So the Lord began to talk to me last day. He said, I'm moving you into the realm of signs. Signs. And I won't lie to you, I've been seeing it for three years. It's like God talks to me about something, then I see physical signs. So there are going to be signs. He calls them tokens of the overflow. Signs. It's going to show up in the area of your health, your mental health, your mental stability, your physical health. Whatever aspect of your body is deteriorating, is receiving life now in the name of Jesus. Is regenerating in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever organ in your body, whatever muscle, whatever tissue, nervous system disorder, whatever it is a mental breakdown, it is reconfiguring by the anointing of God's spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are miracles of regeneration taking place in this house in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever needs to come back into balance and order in your body comes back into order. Hormonal disorder is being balanced by the anointing in the name of Jesus. So I'll put a division between my people and thy people. And tomorrow this sign shall be. See, there's some things that can't hang around your life anymore. I said, there's some things that can't hang around your life anymore. I said, there's some things that can't hang around your life anymore. Listen, any which way the coin falls, you win. I said, any which way this coin falls, you win. Any, any way you throw the dice is Sikiludo. Even if it's not 6-6, six, six, even if it's 1-3 or 5, it's all Sikiludo. It's all winning. I will put a division between my people and your people. And tomorrow this sign shall be. I'm telling you it's a sign. Watch it. You start seeing things in your life appreciating. Don't think it's because of your great wisdom. It's a season for it. It's a season for it. You, you start seeing things that were lost. Some of you in your childhood, some things were lost. God will start bringing recovery in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, you have gifts and talents that cannot be matched for productivity. God will start causing opportunity to come out to give you realm for expression. We're living in a season of recovery in the name of Jesus. And it is for a sign. It's not because of you. It's not for a sign. We're living in that season. Everything in your life has been recovered. Lost things have been found. Lost grounds, you're regaining. Lost years, you're getting them back in the name of Jesus. Listen, this year, you look at your life and say, over truth, nothing was ever lost. You think you've lost opportunity. You think you've lost chances. You think you've messed up your life. There's an anointing for recovery in the name of Jesus. There's an anointing for restoration in the name of Jesus. Lost grounds have been regained. This 2024, except God didn't send me up. And you don't, and except you don't comply with the instructions. You look at your life early this year and say, my God, nothing was lost. Nothing was lost. In this realm of the anointing, nothing is lost. I say in this realm of the anointing, nothing is lost. In the name of Jesus, nothing is lost. The word of God says, say ye not concerning the former years that they were better than these. If you do that, you are not inquired wisely concerning it. You think you've lost anything? You've lost nothing. In the anointing, there's no loss. In the anointing, there's no loss. You may have lost something in the natural realm, but as you step into this zone of the anointing, and as you receive it, there will be no loss. 
No, no. The scripture, according to the scripture, the path of a just man is as a shining light. It shines more and more to the perfect day. Listen, scripturally speaking, yesterday can never, yesterday can never be better than today. I don't care how yesterday was. Even in the natural, it may seem like I had millions in, in, in the years past. I had a better life in years past. We're not aware. No, if you're walking with God, if you're walking with God, yesterday can never be better than today. Don't insult God by talking about what could have been. Don't do that. That's an insult. In this anointing, there's no loss. There's no loss. In this anointing, in the anointing of God's spirit, because God, does, God lives in the eternal now. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, I want continue. He, he sits on yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That's eternity. So, everything he's manipulating. So, yesterday can never be better than today. And tomorrow, and today rather, can never be better than tomorrow. The path of a just man is as a, a right, my righteous one is as a shining light. It shines more and more unto the perfect day. <laughs> I was sharing that, beloved Reverend James, please sit down. Um, surprise party, even though, yes, he was surprised, but partially. Sometimes it's hard to totally surprise a man of God, but. His wife did a good job. At least he himself admitted. So let's go to Proverbs 4.18. Message. A man of God shared that. That really blessed me. Because the Holy Ghost told me last year. You know, I don't want to sound weird, but that's, what, that's the truth. You know, I don't want to sound weird. It's not simply my son, my son. It's also quickening. I've just let a quickening in my heart. I know what the Holy Ghost is, followed by the peace of God. And I, it wasn't that I was meditating on anything particular. I was just going about. And that's where God said, do you realize that in our kingdom, the older we grow, the sweeter life becomes. The older we grow, the more fruitful we become. The older we grow, the more accurate we become. The older we go, the more productive we become. Then, he started, then scripture started coming to my heart. Psalm 92. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. Even in old age, they will be fat and flourishing. I just started seeing it. The path of a just man as a shining light that shines more and more to the perfect day. And then what's that scripture again? Um, as your days are, so shall your strength be. He said, it is when you believe, when you receive this, the scripture, it becomes a vision for your life. And then I confirm it with my power. He says, so don't be like others. Don't take a narrative of life that I have not sponsored. Wow. Don't start expecting something that I have not told you to expect. And I see it even now, present day. You look at um, Pastor uh, Kumui, um, geo of, 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 of whatever, he's holding crusades all over the world. Sometimes one week can be in five, four countries. They say younger people, 30, 40, they're trying, they're, running, they're trying to keep up with him. They can't. And he's telling us he's just beginning. Daddy Kumui. Look at Pastor Adeboe. They're not slowing down. And then you, you're just 40 or you're just 50. And he's not... And you're angry if they don't call you Baba Bomboy. <laughs> don't let me now. Don't, don't me, let me now start. Get, he said, he said, get my vision for your life. Don't allow the world to sponsor a vision for you. Don't allow anybody or unbelieving believers to sponsor a vision for your life. This is what I said. In, my, in our kingdom, the older you get, sweeter life becomes. The old, you, I'm not going to grow into an angry old man. I'm going to be an exciting young man. The older I get, the more exciting I'll be. I'm not growing into an angry old man that's angry at the world. God forbid. I'm getting younger every day. I'm getting bigger every day. Bigger every day. I'm getting bigger every day. Kantarabosake. Get a vision for your life from the word of God. Don't be following all these things. The Holy Ghost told me, I said, yes, and he showed me the scriptures. So that's my vision for my life. The older I'm getting, the stronger I'm becoming, the more accurate I'm becoming. Listen to me, when I'm 90, should the Lord tarry, 20-year-olds will try and catch up with me. I'll be preaching the gospel all over this world with my strength. Glory to God forevermore. Get a vision for God from your, for your finances. I don't care how it looks, just keep believing, just keep speaking, just keep sowing, just keep tithing. As far as I'm concerned, my vision for my finances is that my God is causing all grace to abound towards me all the time. I have all sufficiency in all things and I abound to every good work. That's my vision. I don't care what my bank account looks like. I'm possessed by the vision God has given me for life. 
You better get into this good life. You can't, you can't get into it outside of scriptures. Please sit. You can't. That's why you must, you must become an addict of the scripture. You must become fanatical about these things. Don't put one leg in the world and one leg out. All of you that are in this church, listen to me, and you claim to be my sons and daughters, they're younger people, and you're still going to club. Repent. You've been in this church for how many years? There's the life of a believer. If you've been here for years, months, and years, that means you're not learning. You're not allowing God to change you. There's a life of a believer. You better wake up. The ways of right living people glow with light. The longer they live, the brighter they shine. Listen, let me not lie to you. You cannot shine with sin. Jesus came to kill it. Sin and the glory of God don't mix. How long will you be sleeping around? It's okay if you're just a new believer. And you're learning your mind to be renewed. But yes and yes. Come on. We're not playing games here. But the road of wrongdoing, if you like. <laughs> but the road of wrongdoing gets darker and darker. Me, I like good things though, as you know. But let me tell you the truth. If our gospel can't make us live holy, it's weak. If our, if our gospel can't kill the taste of sin, it's weak. That's the first thing Jesus came to do, to kill sin in the flesh. Our gospel can't kill sin. It's weak. It's weak. It's not real. Gospel that can get you brand new car but can't kill sin. It's not a gospel. Anybody can get a brand new car. But the road of wrongdoing. Guess what? You can't be enlightened with sin. No. Today, let communion kill your taste for sin. Say, so God is part of my inheritance. This raging in my body, kill it. And then change your friends. Change your friends. Change your friends. Clubbers hang out with clubbers. Fornicators hang out with fornicators. Change your friends. If you like, go to another church. Don't worry. Time will replace you. You can be holy, wealthy, live a good life. There's nothing good about sin. It just it condemns you, it finishes you. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Make you pay more than you're willing to pay. It's part of the good life. The nature of Christ in me kills my taste for sin. Unless I'm not fellowshiping with him. And then I must do what I need to do. I must change my inner circle. I must. You can't, you can't live a good life. I don't care how anointed you are. If your friends are kwana kwana, I don't care how anointed you are. You will go that way. It takes a company to support a system. A system to support values. And part of that system is friends. It's not everybody that is rich that's stealing home. Don't listen to any devil. It's not every fine girl that's prospering that's sleeping around. Don't let any devil confuse you. There's some fine girls like many of you in this church. Where they, you, it's fire on you. If the guy comes around you, my his thingy would all dry of nonsense. Are you, you better be a fire woman, fire man. I beg. Don't, not this. Beg, I beg, I beg. Don't make us look as if our gospel is weak. But the road of wrongdoing gets darker and darker. I didn't plan for all of this, or so just jump you out of me. Malachi chapter three. Malachi, Malachi chapter three. Malachi chapter 3. Wake up. There's enough strength in the gospel to, to sponsor a pure life. Wake up. Malachi 3. Why do you think we're teaching all this here about communion, blood covenant, all of that thing? When you stand in this blood covenant, the power of God will make a way for you. The power of God will make a way for you. Malachi chapter 3, verse 13. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your words have been stout against me, said the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against thee? 14. 14. You have said it is vain to serve God. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance? That we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Verse 15. Go ahead. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. 
Yes, we've all been there. When we're wondering. You see, religion is what will always make you answer, ask this question and not get an answer. I tell you the truth with all sincerity and respect. Where I grew up spiritually, wonderful people, but the, that, that place I grew up spiritually did not have the answer for life's questions. I could not, I couldn't translate because I go out into the world and face with real issues, but I don't get answers in church. Church will give you an answer. Not that all of us who come to church were all pious. Like we're taking communion today. You see, every, nobody can kill a fly. As they enter car park, life don't continue. They'll go and keep the appointment to the girlfriend. Married man will go and keep appointment with the girlfriend as he's leaving community service. <laughs> ah, oh my show. And now we call the proud happy. Yeah? I don't even understand what's happening. I didn't plan all of this. <laughs> now we call the proud happy. It's religion. Because religion gives you no answer. It puts a burden on you too heavy to bear. It tells you don't steal, but it will not give you the way out. That's why we sow seed and call money in this church. We call money like there's no tomorrow. We sow our seed and call money. It's not better than stealing. When that angel eye on your head, you'll be saying, I don't like you, but you'll give me money. Now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that walk wickedness are set. You better be serious with your Christianity. They that walk wickedness are set up. It's a very wicked world though. <laughs> it's not wickedness. People know heart. That's why Job was celebrated. He said, he said he's, he's, he's the influence God gave Job. He was amongst the city elders, the city at the gate. The wealth and influence and voice God gave Job. He said, he said, I was as though that delivered the prey from the mouth of the lion. Job will go and give widows help and not, and not demand to sleep with them. He will help people and not want to control their lives. That's righteousness. That's why God wants to raise righteous people. Wickedness in this world. People have no conscience. It's just, it's just the devil's operation. Are you a somebody? Why must you defile somebody to help them? It's a wickedness. The Bible said in Psalm 34 verse 20, he said, he said, he said take heed to the covenant for the, for the inhabita inhabitations of this earth are full of cruelty. So take heed to the covenant. Yea, they that, are, they that tempt God are even delivered. Verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. They thought they, they thought the Lord would not hear. Hey now, wow! What kind of oppression is this? What kind of oppression is this? Like we said, in, like we have been saying in Nigeria for years and years and years. We pray and we see the thing go this way. We pray, we see it go this way. Until the last one, we prayed, we saw it go that way too. Until God decided to do His own sign of wonder, and inside of the way it went, He's doing His own thing. If you understand, if you understand. If you don't, let's continue. They that fear the Lord spake often one to another and the Lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance. See, there is book of remembrance oh, and has nothing to do with grace or no grace. There is book of remembrance. Just like this book of life. It's a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. Verse 6. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. And that thought upon his name. They kept following him even in frustration. They kept trusting him even when they didn't understand. There's a book of remembrance. Look at this. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts. In that day when I shall make up my jewels. Do you know what a jewel is? A jewel is, 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 a, is, a, is forged in fire. It is fossils from hundreds or thousands of years. They become carbonated, pressure and temperature and pressure under, the, and then they conform and change. All this emerald, diamond, all of it, it is dead animals and plants that are forged in years under the ground, temperature and pressure, and they come out as jewels. This is the contradiction of faith, that there is no faith that will be unproven. No faith that will be untested. That will be untested. But let me tell you the truth. Affliction is not forever. There's always a day of turning around. And when God turns things around, he compensates you. That's our God for you. He will never be your debt. 
And that's what I begin to see happening in 2024. I see this pulling away. God is going to push the saints of God. He's going to remove shame. He's going to glorify. He's just going to, and it's going to happen by supernatural manifestations. He's going to pull the church and put them in front, in front. And he's going to make, he's going to humiliate the wisdom of this world. I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Are you here somebody? I saw you here somebody? Sama, this you're following Jesus is not in vain. Then you shall return and discern, thank you, between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. This is not Old Testament scripture. It's for all time. And the Lord told me from 2024, it has been happening in a sprinkling, but now I'm going to do it. It's going to become a mass thing in the body of Christ. I'm going to put a distance between the world and my people. I'm going to put my people ahead. Are you here somebody? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Give me Psalm 37, 23. So February, you're going to start seeing an accelerated manifestation of this pulling away. God's going to distance. He's going to, he's going to pull by reason of, how do I put it? Results, manifestation, blessing, push his people forward. So that's the word I had. Leap. It's going to be like a leap. But listen, it's steps you're going to take. Oh. It's instructions you're going to obey. God's going to tell you to do some things. God's going to show you some things. And you start taking some steps. And as you enter that thing, it will be like you enter into a time warp. It will just move you forward. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delighteth in the way. That good is righteous. One that has been justified made right before God by a sacrifice. The steps. So steps are very important. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delighteth. He rejoices in the way of the righteous. Are you here somebody? Glory to God. Psalm 18. Psalm 18 verse 32. Psalm 18 verse 32. Glory to God. It is God that girdeth me with strength. And he makes my way perfect. You know why he has to gird you with strength first? Because some of the things he will tell you to do will require courage. It requires courage to stay in a place that doesn't look like he's prospering. Because God knows in a little while, he's about to promote you. I need to be in that place. So it takes courage to obey God. To stay when he says stay, to go when he says go. It is God that girded me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Now verse 33. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. You know a deer, their back legs are where they, you know deers don't run, they leap. So he makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon my high places. You see, it's all instruction, it's all enlightenment. Now let's go to 36. Thank you Lord. Thou has enlarged my steps under me. And my feet did not sleep. You see, under this anointing, even fools will not make a mistake. The anointing will undergird you. That was enlarged my steps under me. My feet did not sleep. You see, these things about the way in which you go and the enlightenment that causes you to walk in that way. Are you here, somebody? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, 2 Kings 7. 1. I'll be winding up now. Thank you, Lord. So, there are two things, there are two things that are going to be the thing that's going to enable you to take these leaps this year. Number one is enlightenment, and number two is favor. Healing and Miracle Service, on Friday, the Lord told us two things, interventions. And then he said there is fierce favor in February. Fierce favor in February. You know what I mean by fierce? Aggressive. You know, when there's, when there's, you see, the favor of God is not just in the material realm. It's in every realm. Do you know the healing anointing is a manifestation of God's favor? The anointing to prosper, the anointing to deliver. So whenever there are aggressive forces against you, God has aggressive forces that can counter it. So this favor is releasing this month is fierce. Oh, hallelujah. 
We'll talk further, but not for today, about the favor of God. So these two things, enlightenment and favor, these are the two power twins for this month. That's what the Holy Ghost told us, said, that's what is going to cause my people to leap forward. Enlightenment. They must be enlightened, and then they will walk in my favor. Praise the Lord. Now look at this. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. No, I've not finished. And two measures of barley for a shekel. Yes. In the gates of Samaria, the background of this story was when there was a siege on Samaria. And they cut off the supply line of, of food and all of that to the city. And everybody began to starve. In fact, some people, some women started talking about eating their children. In fact, they were quarreling. They came to the king of Samaria and they were quarreling two women because they said that and they agreed that they'll eat, they'll boil. The, the first woman, they'll boil her own child and eat. And then when they've eaten, the, huh? Yeah, okay, am I? And it's a story I was wondering. Now. Okay, I was wondering what's going on. <laughs> okay. And, and when they boiled the first woman's one and ate, when it came time to boil the second woman's child, she refused. So they went to the king to help them. When the king heard it, he said, where will I get help? When he, he cried out and they saw that under him, he was fasting, there was sackcloth under him. Then he now turned to the prophet. I don't know why they always turn to the prophet. He said, look at that man. Go and get. He said, he said I am not the son of my father today. If Elisha's head remains on his, it remains on his shoulder. And what is Elisha's own? So he now sent one of his guys to go to Elisha's house to go and apprehend him. So Elisha was sitting down with the princes and nobles and all of that in his house. <laughs> I said, look at the son of a murderer has sent somebody for me. <laughs> look at his feet here. Then he said, shut that door. He said, me, I like, you see, me, I mean, I'm not one kind of sophisticated man or God. They start to run, they start to steal. One time, Archbishop Idahosa. <laughs> one time, Amrobas came to his house. I said, I crossed that hand there. And, and honestly, the, the hand froze and the gun dropped. And they turned around and ran. But another time they came to his house, the Holy Ghost told him to jump. He just turned around, went to his balcony and jumped. <laughs> As he jumped, he broke his leg. So they fixed it. So he was going for crusade in cast. So one came back and said, I thought you said you're a man of faith. Why did you run? When Amro was scared, he said, next time they come to your house, stay. <laughs> very simple. Very simple. Very simple. And me, cripples walked in the crusade every day. <laughs> so this prophet said, the king of Samaria has come for me. Can you imagine? He wants to take my head. That son of a murderer. He has sent his lieutenant for me. Then he said, shut the door. <laughs> I thought with prophet anointing, he said, let him enter. He will die here. He said, shut the door. Let that man enter. <laughs> then the Holy Ghost quickly gave him prophecy. He said, by this time tomorrow. Extreme lack will turn to extreme abundance. Let's go ahead. Let's, let me just read it through. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, you will see it with your eyes, but you will not eat thereof. Let's go ahead. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. Bible historians tell us that that was Gehazi and his sons. And they said one to another, why sit here till we die? See, when the prophetic word comes out, just believe it all. God is the performer, you be the believer. Don't tell God how to do it. The deliverance of a nation came from, now let's, let's look at this. If we say we'll enter the city, then the famine is in the city, which, and we shall die there because, of course, according to the law of Moses, they will stone them to death. Lepers are not supposed to get near and if we still sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us fall into the host of Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall but die. But at least we'll die happy <laughs> with food in our mouth. <laughs> and they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. The Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear the what? The noise of chariots and the noise of horses. You better believe the supernatural. Law. Don't let book confuse you. Book has its place. Leave it where it is. But believe in the supernatural. I'm not saying book is all good, but believe the supernatural. Law. 
and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, no, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. So the, the angels of God just confused them and gave them a reasoning that was just foolish. They, they believed it and concluded. Who told them this? All they heard was noise. Who told them? They began to interpret the noise. Something is going ahead of you in this communion service. Let me not go ahead of myself. And the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Let's go ahead. The, wherefore they arose and fled the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses. That's their donkeys. Even the camp as it was and fled for their life. Now look at this. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. And they touched themselves, we're still alive. Nobody's hiding anywhere. We're alive. Oh. Now then their selfishness came into being. They carried silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it. What does silver and gold, how, silver, gold, and raiment, how can he help a leper? You are a leper. Selfish nature of man. Now look at this. They went and hid it. Enter another tent. Carry theirs also. Went and hid it. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Then they say one to another, we, we are not doing well, though. This is the day of good tidings. If we hold our peace, if we tarry to the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, <laughs> that we go and tell the king's household. I declare to you in the name of Jesus, this is a day of good tidings for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I said today, February is a month of good tidings for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord your God has arisen on your behalf. The Lord your God has arisen in your defense. He's speaking, he's raising up men to speak for you where you're not present in the name of Jesus. He's speaking up, raising up men to converse for you, to speak for you in the name of Jesus, to defend you, to, to, to answer rumors concerning you that could disqualify you. He's raising up people behind your back where you're not even present. People you don't even know and they're just, they're just fighting for you. They're just rooting for you. It's a day of good tidings for you. I say it's a good day of good tidings for you. My point is the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You see, as they began to walk, God, as you begin to walk in the path that God says you should walk, God will amplify your steps. That's what he did for Israel. He sent rumors and fear ahead of them into their enemy's camp. Are you here, somebody? <laughs> so this month, eh, as you walk in the path that God has for you, as you take instructions, as you, as you just flow with the instructions of God, are you here, somebody? God will amplify your steps. Many of you, where, where it looked like a wasteland, you see provision will come. Out of honey, you suck rock. You, out of rock, you suck honey. Out of a flint stone, diamond, hard stone, oil will come out. The supernatural. And you're going to start seeing it pulling away. You, you will be there on the front row seat of your own life. As you take those steps, you're going to see things that seemed hitherto unreachable. They will just appear at your doorstep. Things that seem so difficult, negotiation, 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 no one end. You'll just see. The answer has come. Are you here, somebody? By the supernatural. So this month is a month of good tidings for you. And as you walk in the light of God, in the favor of God, praise the name of the Lord. You see, it's the instructions of God. The, the enlightenment of God will give you instructions and you take steps. As you take steps, favor will multiply upon you. And God will go ahead of you and confuse the enemy. And I tell you the truth, you just find yourself having to pack the spoils of war. This is what's going to happen from this month. Glory to God forevermore. Somebody lift up those hands. Let's worship the Lord. Just thank the Lord for what you believe you have received. I hear my heart, you will not be denied. That's why I hear my spirit, you will not be denied. You will not be denied. Your desire will not be denied you. This blood has, re this sacrifice has removed the distance between you and the desires of your heart. Oh, this month will be significantly progressive. You are moving forward. You're making progress. You're leaping forward in the name of Jesus. The enlightenment of God visits you day by day. Your eyes see like never before. Your ears hear like never before. Your heart discerns like never before. Moreover, the favor of God cleaves to your heart, let your spirit, cleaves to your life, makes a way for you. The door is open before you. No man, no devil can shut it. You will testify this week. You rejoice in the goodness of God this week. 
These things will follow you this week early in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will keep returning to God's house with testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this joy that God has given you, no man can take it away. No devil can take it away. You keep moving forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a shout of praise somebody. Somebody shout glory. Glory.